In this video, I'll show you how to solve trigonometric equations using identities. This is part two in the series. Question one asks, solve the equation and limit your solution to angles less than 360 degrees. The equation that we have is two times cosine two x minus one is equal to zero. So our task is to solve for this x, and the first step is to move minus one to the right side. If you do that, you end up with two cosine of two x is equal to positive one. Dividing both sides by two to isolate for cosine two x eliminates this two, giving us cosine of two x is equal to half. Next, I'll use cosine inverse on both sides. This gives us two x on the left side and cosine inverse of half on the right side. Now I need to find out what cosine inverse of half is equal to. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, half, we get 60 degrees. 2x is equal to 60 degrees. Since cosine has a positive ratio of half, it's positive. Cosine is positive according to the cast rule in the fourth and first quadrant. So it's going to be right here and here. And 60 degrees represents our reference angle. So this is our reference of 60 degrees. Therefore, this bigger angle is 360 minus 60. 360 minus 60 gives us 300 degrees. Writing that down, 300 degrees. Also keep in mind coterminal angles. So if I add 360 to 60 degrees, I end up with 420. That will also serve as an angle. That will also produce, if I write down cosine of 420 to my calculator, I'll get half. And similarly, if I add 360 to 300, I end up with 660. 660. That being said, I have to divide each of these numbers by two because dividing this by two, the left side, I have to do the same thing for all the possible angles on the right side. This becomes 30 degrees. This becomes 150 degrees. This becomes 210 degrees. And lastly, this becomes 330 degrees. This fits what the question asks. The question asks to limit your solution to angles less than 360 degrees. Therefore, all of these are between zero and 360 degrees, and all of these will work. Let's move on to question two. In question two, they ask us to solve the equation, the square root of secant squared x is equal to plus or minus the square root of four. The first thing that you have to do is analyze both the left and the right side. Take a look. They're telling us that the right side is plus minus the square root of four. The square root of four is two. So instead of writing the square root of four, we can write down plus minus two. And similarly, we have the square root of secant squared x. That's like saying the square root of x squared, which gives us simply x. Instead of writing the square root in this two, I can write down secant x. I don't like working with reciprocal trigonometric functions, especially when I'm looking for the angle that represents the ratio. So instead of using secant x, I'll use its reciprocal trigonometric function, which is cosine. One over cosine x is equal to secant x, plus minus two. I'll branch this into two parts, where one part is cosine x, one over cosine x is equal to positive two, and the other branch is one over cosine x is equal to negative two. And I'll solve for cosine x in both of these situations. Solving for cosine x here, I end up with cosine x is equal to half, and over here I'll end up with cosine x is equal to negative one over two. Starting with this one, I know that cosine is positive here and here the first and fourth quadrant, and it's negative here and here. So the angles that will represent half for this situation will be this one and this one, and the opposite is true for this part. Let's start with the left side. Using cosine inverse of half gives us 60 degrees, and that was evident in the first example as well. And 60 degrees represents the acute reference angle. Therefore, this right here is 60 degrees. And this one is 360 minus 60. 
300 degrees. I'll do the same thing for the other cosine x. Since I already found the acute reference angle, all I have to do is subtract 60 from 180. So 180 minus 60 gives me this green terminal side, leaving me with 120 degrees. And to find this one, I'll take 180 and add 60 to it, giving me 240. These are the four solutions for this equation. And there you have it. That is how to solve trigonometric equations using identities. Make sure to watch part three for more complicated examples.